Dr. Leipzig in Germany, Fit Marseille in France, Jihlava, or as most people say, Jihlava in Czech Republic, and Visions du Real in Neon in Switzerland. Uh, so uh, it is an alliance of the, the documentary, European documentary film festivals. Uh, most of these festivals are unique in the way that they're looking for strong authors, and also their programs are focused on gathering uh, and uh, gathering people from the industry uh, and creating a specific program for them. So if you would compare, for example, uh, Jihlava Documentary Film Festival, they have an industry program that is more based on, on professions. So they develop uh, the profession of producer or the profession of being a documentary filmmaker rather than uh, developing pro specific projects. Uh, on the other hand, Visions du Real is, uh, is, a, is a fantastic festival with a, a beautiful program of documentary films, but also they know how to reach out to an industry. So they have a regular, very conventional pitching forum. They have a rough cut lab. Uh, so there, most of these festivals are united in the way of how they uh, work with uh, film, film professionals. Um, we have various projects. So Doc Alliance as a creative partnerships of film festivals that would normally fight for premieres as CPH Docs would always fight with Doc Leipzig, sometimes with Ihlava as well, because they're all, they were all in autumn, so they would fight against premieres, but once in a year, all the festival directors meet and they talk about things in a friendly manner. So that is, of course, very crucial. Um, one of our projects is Doc Alliance Selection. It is a selection of uh, seven films uh, each festival uh, nominates one film, so there is a there is a there is a selection of seven films, and these films travel to film festivals. Uh, it is it is a way of how the festival selectors can actually you know pick one specific film and try and promote it and get it to other film festivals. Um, I can uh, and, and what we do for this film is that we uh, award uh, the best film. Uh, it used to be in Cannes, and this, uh, for the last two, three years, we decided to move to Locarno uh, because we think that in Locarno we can be a bit more visible with a documentary activity. But still, you get the industry there. So, um, so this is uh, still an offline activity that the Doc Alliance Festival Network does. I would just like to show you a, a, a short clip. This is the film that we awarded this year in uh, Locarno. We gave them a prize of 5,000 5, euros, but especially we gave them some visibility. Don't know what happened. Um, anyway, this was a film about uh, um, a female Kurdish guerrillas fighting at the, uh, uh, against the Islamic uh, state at the border of uh, Turkey and Iraq. But it is a very strong uh, film in the form. Uh, that is what we are looking for, actually. And uh, that is why we're developing uh, various projects together with the Alliance. I'd like to try and show you one last clip of a film that we promoted together as the Doc Alliance Network. Hopefully, we can see the whole clip. If not, it's a teaser. You can look it up, up online.
So this is the uh, film Maestro, the Passion of Christ by uh, a French visual artist, uh, Andy Garif. Uh, it's an adaptation of a 14th century uh, polyptych. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, so you can see the scenes with the primitive lack of perspective and it's an adaptation of this painting. Um, okay, so these were just clips of films or trailers of films that we uh, try to promote together. And um, let's get back to this presentation. So, Gulistan was the uh, winner of the Doc Alliance selection. Another project we do together is Doc Alliance Academy, just for you to know briefly. Um, it is a, a project that focuses on um, education. So, uh, because, of, uh, because most of the film festivals normally work with educational, educational programs, so what we did is that we gathered all the educational activities that all our Alliance festivals do, and we create an, uh, created an umbrella over them. And uh, this is a, a website, DA Academy Org, that is made especially for teachers at, at uh, universities, but also uh, secondary schools, uh, where we uh, make films available for streaming or download, and we create methodologies to these documentary films from the whole world. Of course, it is questionable how you can make a, a united methodology for someone from Denmark and from someone from Poland. Uh, it, is, uh, it is a question. Uh, it is a project, of course, supported by the uh, Creative Europe. And we are now uh, in the third year and we will see how this will be developed. So uh, getting to the point, uh, the Doc Alliance, uh, the most visible project of the Doc Alliance network is the Doc Alliance Films platform. Um, so as I said, we, existed, we exit for 10 years already. Um, and the main aim was actually to bridge the gap between the festival and the audience, or the festival and the distribution. Uh, most of the, film, uh, the, the festivals have about 100, up to 300 films in their film programs. And um, uh, there's just a small part of them that actually gets distributed. So, you know, 10 years ago we thought, it was a more of an anarchist idea than it would be a business model. We thought like, let's put the films on the internet. And that was even before, you know, there was the YouTube uh, generation. So uh, it was very slow and slow to, to, to start. And now you could see that actually, of course, the internet has become an important channel on, uh, for distribution. Um, for reaching, reaching out to the audiences not for generating revenue yet, I would believe. Um, but of course, yeah, that's a question we'll get to later. Uh, you could see uh, just uh, something very specific. This is a profile of a film online. So this is a the last film of Sergei Loznica. You might have seen the event, uh, all made from archive footage from the year 1991 from the Putsch. Um, and uh, you could see, so you could choose, you can read the synopsis, uh, you can choose if you want to stream SD or stream HD, or most of the other films also have the possibility to download HD or any other format. So it's not, uh, it's, I mean, you don't need to just watch on the small screen, you can download it and project it at home if you have a projector or watch it on a big TV. Um, the website is set in the way that uh, we have a lot of context around it as well, so we have uh, interviews and essays and analyses, but uh, we're launching a new website in January, so probably this will change as well. Um, about what we present, uh, the internet uh, for this is maximum freedom with the programming. You don't have, to, you don't have the slots, you... Um, you can present absolutely new things, you can present politically incorrect things, you can just choose whatever you want in this way. Um, not talking about the territories though. And um, so these are some of the directors that we present online. Uh, you might know most of them probably, of course, Viktor Kosakowski, uh, Mansky, Loznica. Yeah, but I think you know all of them. And uh, this is just a couple of them I, I just picked in a, in a second that we present. And um, how we work is that we, uh, we usually present free stream events because we thought, okay, when we started many years ago, it was very difficult, especially in the region of Czech Republic, still not being that West, um, to sell films online. Well, actually to sell anything online. So uh, we decided that, okay, if the internet cannot give you a revenue for the producers, 
it can at, at least give you promotion. So what we do is, okay, it's, it's the way it is, let's put the films there for free. Uh, so we always negotiate the rights uh, with the rights holders and we, we program in the way that we present uh, film retrospectives uh, or programs top, on topics um, of films for free stream for one or two weeks usually worldwide. So this is something that can reach out to, let's say, 35,000 views of, of the films in, during this uh, week event. Uh, if we'd keep the film online just for money, it could reach from 10 views until uh, up to, let's say, 20, 250 views uh, a week. So uh, depending on the film. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's minus a lot of zeros. Um, so the free stream events for us are, um, a way of how to promote documentary film uh, in general. Uh, it enables us uh, to uh, let people discover in the genre. And uh, of course, because we are people from the, uh, from the film, uh, we, uh, we prefer film in the cinema. Uh, but the point is that uh, this is supposed to be rather a substitute of the missing distribution channels. Uh, so what we do is we combine both. Uh, we, uh, for example, with Victor, uh, we invited him to Prague. Um, we made an online retrospective that was worldwide, so anyone from the world could see his films, the old, even Tisha you were talking about today, and you could see it online, uh, the older films. And we invited him with his newest film to Czech Republic. And um, we asked him to do a masterclass. Uh, we shot the masterclass. Uh, the masterclass was online for free stream as well. So it was a whole packaging. You would, you would present a director that comes into one territory. You would present his older films that are online. You don't need to go to the cinema for that. But you can go to the cinema for the newer film, which is online as well, day and day to release, because you maybe are not in the same city where the premiere is. And there would be like 14 cinemas in the whole Czech Republic screening anti because, yeah, it would be difficult for them to market it. So um, this is a way how we develop the way uh, of, on how to how to work with the films that we th we know that they belong to the cinema. But on the other hand, you need to create a, a whole bigger package of of, of uh, things that you offer to the audiences and also. Um, open the eyes to people who probably never heard about Viktor Kosakovsky, you know. So this is just an example of what we have. Of course, we have online not only famous directors, but we take on board also film students. We, we, we look for uh, new talents, so we merge together on one platform. You can find absolutely newcomers, and then you can find legendary filmmakers like Anja Zvarda, for example. And Anja Zvarda is, was a very popular kick for us, I must say. Um, be, uh, so just to be very specific, because I've been traveling and talking about VOD for many years and it's all so abstract and it's about how it's the future of the distribution and then, you know, you, you earn 15 euros. So um, our, usually I would never give an exclusive contract to VOD. Uh, our contract is not exclusive, like most of them. That's why VOD platforms started producing, so that they have their uh, exclusive rights, uh, uh, so it's a non-exclusive contract. Uh, of course, uh, geoblocking is possible. Uh, that is an issue that is, of course, very big because um, it is more of an illusion that internet is free in the way of how you can you can approach the audience in the whole world. Uh, it's not true. Uh, because usually the more successful the film is, the more difficult it is to get it online. Uh, I receive a list uh, from the sales agent like this of 25 distributors that have it, have it, uh, have bought the whole package of the rights. That means they bought the TV, the VOD, the, the theatrical and everything. And most of the, most of the distributors don't even work with the VOD, so VOD rights. So it's just sitting there, but they bought the whole package in case something happens, really. So, um, so yeah, so it's getting more and more tough actually because documentaries are becoming more and more successful, which is great. Uh, but it's uh, absolutely impossible to put a film online worldwide at the same time as it is promoted at other film festivals or at other, um, at, uh, during their premieres. 
Um, yeah, so you choose the format. Our royalty rate is 60%. I would never go below 50% if you're offering films to VOD. Uh, the license term is two years, yeah. Okay, opt out with, uh, yeah, that's a good thing for you also if you are uh, doing contracts with VOD platforms, you should have an opt out there t saying that, let's say a festival in Sweden would approach you that they're interested in your film and uh, you should have an opt out there that you just ask them that you would like to exclude Sweden for a certain time or uh, forever because the festival might have a problem with them. And that, that is something that can help you, um, help you somehow erase the fear of putting your film online. Yeah, how much money can I earn? It's the most, it's the most classic question I get at every, uh, at every panel discussion about VOD. Um, yeah, you can earn like 15 euros. <laughs> Um, no, I mean, of course, you can, you can earn uh, more than that, but um, what I usually respond is, how much did you earn offline? <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's copying this. It's, it, there has been a lot of dreams about how you can, you know, how you can sell the film on the internet and so on, but it just needs to be a part of the strategy that you have with the film before or, you know, if you take care of the film well during the distribution, the offline distribution strategy, then uh, you might also uh, get uh, some positive respond when you're online, but it's, it's about the film. It's not about, I mean, the strategy is not, uh, the, 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 the online distribution is not something that comes, you know, like from the air, it's just a part of uh, the whole work and the energy you give to the film. So, um, what can the internet give me and how not to get disappointed from online distribution? From my experience, I mean, it could be different, of course. Um, what, you could see a picture here probably and also the 24 doc, they had a lot of visuals from the uh, documentary of Michael Metzen, The Visit, uh, which, is, uh, which is actually a film about uh, a possible or, yeah, a possible uh, encounter with the uh, intelligence from the uh, universe, and but it's it's not really a science fiction. It's more about uh, it's a more about uh, about us. Who are we? How would we present ourselves to uh, someone, uh, some other intelligence? And. Um, what we did with this film is that exactly we brought uh, the director uh, to Prague. We made a premiere of uh, the film The Visit. We made a very nice online event. So this is again something that Doc Lounge presented or any of these film clubs, like everyone is trying to think of any additional content. But with that also we um, present the film online. And you can try various models. You can try either uh, streaming it for free and asking people to donate, uh, but in the end they don't, you know. But it's a, it's a, it's a nice thing to try. Maybe, um, maybe you could, but you have a great re outreach with this. I mean, you can, you can really, uh, if you do it, let's say for 48 hours, uh, or you can count the views of the film, so you can really think of how much do you want to spread the film uh, and how effective is it still for you. Like, let's say you want just 200 people to see it and then you stop it and you put it offline and you just keep the theatrical going and you just boost the word of mouth. People, some people see it, some media critics could see it and uh, a film critique, sorry, and um, so this is really playful in the way of how you can present the film. So it's just, it's just, it's, it's most of the things that you normally do, as we heard here, but you just try to connect with the online. And of course, if it's a very new film, then you need to, then you need to geoblock to one territory. That's what we do always. And with Michael Metzen again, we, we presented, which is really interesting to, 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 uh, to stream, uh, to live stream his masterclass, uh, to, to stream his older films, you know. We did this, for example, with Gianfranco Rosi as well, who is a, 
a filmmaker who was, who was awarded now at Berlinale with his last film Fuoco Amare, and then he, before that he was awarded in Venice uh, for his film Sacro Gra. And uh, Sacro Gra we, is, is, is the film that we took uh, into distribution. And um, it is a film that, you know, for Czech people, there's no interest in it. There, it's a highway around Rome. You know, how do you want to market this? Uh, it's just a beautiful film. And uh, you can't really do, I mean, it's not a social impact story. It's not a, it's not a portrait about a person. Uh, it's more essayistic, rather. It's a cycle. So we, uh, we had to think of other ways of how to, how to bring audiences to this. And again, we did the model with, of course, bringing him there, doing the masterclass, and also presenting his older films. Because in my opinion, they were even better than the, the newer one. Um, I will then give you some tips for the films. We have them online. And in this way, um, you could really approach people from... You remind older films. It's good for the filmmaker. His films are reminded because he will always produce new and new films. And it's important for people who travel to film festivals to know your older films. Uh, it is good for the media because... Uh, because there is a whole variety of content they can promote. It's either an educational online masterclass, or it's someone coming, you can have an interview, or it's a, a top film that was awarded in Venice. So, um, yeah, so this is something I just want to get to. Um, yeah, the other thing that uh, works the best is really to go online as fast as possible with the film. Uh, to do it at the same time as uh, as uh, as when you are in the theaters, because that's the only time that the media writes about the film, of course. So um, you only have once in your life the time, I mean, to, the money to promote the film. And of course, you can ask if it's if it cannibalizes the audiences. And from our experience, it does not. It it really just adds the numbers. Uh, to the audiences. So let's say uh, Czech Republic has uh, 10 million inhabitants. Uh, normally you get from 500 up to 10,000 maximum, 10,000 uh, people coming for, uh, to, for, to watch documentaries in the cinema. And with the online, if you do a free stream event, you can, you know, you can reach out to 35,000. If you do the online, you can add a, a lot, another hundreds of people that you reach out to through the online distribution. So it's just adding up. And of course, for you as producers or distributors, the best is to have the film at as many platforms as you can, because there you will earn 15, there, there you will earn uh, 25, there are 150, there are 1,500. And if you add up at least, let's say, I don't know, five, 10 platforms, uh, and do the contracts with them, <laughs> then you can maybe earn some money even after uh, the t all the TV acquisitions you get and all the festival screening fees you get and so on. Uh, these are some basic business models. The subscribe, SVOD, this is how we work, Doc Alliance Films as well. So you can subscribe to uh, for four euros a month and watch films on our platform. This is how Netflix works, for example. That's about $7 a month. A uh, beautiful site is the Sundance Doc Club. Uh, Film In is a Spanish uh, platform that is very, very nice. They, have, uh, they also have fiction film. Uh, Tank uh, is, a, is a very nice platform that is being just launched in France. Um, then let's say over the top uh, services, if you haven't heard about that, that's, that's basically uh, just uh, third party uh, services. I mean, it's just that you get the films uh, or a service gets the films to TVs. So um, that's uh, the American ones of Hulu, Voodoo, YouTube, Google Play, iTunes and Amazon, you know those guys. Uh, you can, of course, have contracts with aggregators, which is the best for you in order to approach the big five. Um, the, the, I don't have the well-known, because everyone knows them, but uh, the, the one for documentaries also is the Under the Milky Way. 
And those are companies that take their percentage, but they sign all the contracts for you with Amazon. And because, you know, like you can't just come as a producer to iTunes. So uh, the aggregators are the companies that make the contracts for you. Uh, TVOD is transactional VOD. That means that you come to a platform and you can uh, buy individual films. So the di difference between the subscribe and the transactional VOD is that the subscribe um, uh, is better for more unknown films. It gives you a chance to discover new films because it's you pay once and then you can you can you know browse through the whole catalog of these platforms. Uh, with the transactional, with the TVOD, uh, it's usually based for films that are you know they have a strong marketing because people already know what they're looking for on the internet and they find this film and they know they want to buy it. So that's a TVOD. Mm. The film do, for example, is a is a nice platform. It's British, and they look out. They do their acquisitions, and they search for good films. They have also uh, fiction, uh, and also Flimit, but that's uh, that's more of an Austrian German platform. Universina, Universina is a an art film. Those are good platforms. Um, yeah, Edward is something. Uh, Edward is like advertisement VOD, that means that uh, they offer the films for free stream and they generate the revenue from the advertisements. It's very clever. Um, and then DIY services like Vimeo or Watch My Bit, I mean, it, dep it means that the producer uh, just sets uh, the VOD themselves, it's not that you get to a VOD platform. And uh, what we do is, of course, promote, promote, promote. Uh, what, what is interesting with the internet is that um, you can embed films. That means you can copy a player and offer it to a media partner. Uh, so it's a whole di different psychology of how to uh, work with a film because um, there is also a good thing, maybe it could be interesting for you, it's called Distrify. Distrify is a, is, a, is a platform where you can upload your film to a player and you can easily copy this player to other websites. So this is something that follows how the internet works. The internet is more about sharing, about moving things around. It's not, uh, it's not a building that you enter like in the cinema. So uh, you don't need to go to one website and just at this website you watch the film. On the internet, I think it should be in the, it work in the way that you should find where places where you can paste the player of the film. Um, so what we do is we offer these. Uh, we, we make we have media partners with whom we uh, to whom we offer uh, the film retrospectives we have or the online events that we present. And it's very interesting for them because suddenly they, they write more about the films because uh, they can offer content on their website as well. Uh, they suddenly have a film. Uh, you know, m many times, it's, it's, you must know this, how difficult it is to, have a, to get a film critique on, a, on a something new, on a documentary. And in this way, if you tell them, yeah, I mean, we can give you an exclusive streaming thing, a streaming event for this media, for your website, for one or two days or for a week, then of course they're more motivated to, uh, to stream the film. So, uh, yeah. Um, so I just wanted to give you a, a, a brief insight into how we work, uh, a brief insight about the possibilities of other VOD platforms. Um, I think the most important is to get to the cinemas, of course, and to get a, to a film festival it's interesting that uh, people don't really use art house film that much anymore. They use festival films because because it's mainly about the film festivals where the fest the films are. It's not that much in art house cinema anymore. And um, but it's a, you know I mean we always thought that our platform is more about prolonging the life of the film. Uh, and more and more it's just being a, just a parallel channel to all the others. Um, and if you realize after a month that your film is not making money, then just you know, make the decision 
in do you want to make the money or do you just want to get the audiences because that's the main question you need to ask when you're thinking of a strategy with the internet and uh, if you're fine with that then just open it just choose where but you know when the time is good as it's, it's the same as doing free streams or uh, free screenings in cafes you know so yeah, and these are just uh, some tips I wanted to give you t that you can watch. Uh, we have a masterclass of uh, Godfrey Reggio uh, on our platform. Uh, you can watch the older film of Gianfranco Rosi, El Sicario, which is about a hitman, uh, a guy who killed about 100 people. Uh, and it's just a conversation in a motel. Uh, but the story is uh, so surreal for us that uh, you can stay the 81 minutes and you can survive just watching a person talking. Um, we have a Danish Jürgen Latz, yeah. Uh, 66 scenes from Jürgen Latz, uh, it's a film, it's like postcards from a journey. Or uh, if you like experimental film, then the Austrian director, uh, Peter Cherkaski, who's also the founder of the Six Pack Film Company. So these are just a couple of tips if you, if you want to browse through our catalog, you can watch. And that's it. Thanks. A wonderful, Diana. I'm a big fan of, of, of uh, Dog Alliance, and, and, and whenever I'm teaching, I'm also saying to the students, come on, make subscriptions. It's, it's, it's four euros per month. It's nothing, huh? Per month. And um, I mean, it's, it's for, for, for new. Newcomers into documentary, I mean, it's, it's a little, uh, it's, it's, it's a chance to see some film, historical films as well. I mean, you were mentioning 66 Scenes from America, and that was a film that I commissioned many, many years ago. And uh, so, uh, you know, one of the, some of these classics are there that you can really um, profit from as you can see all, all the new films. So uh, that's to be recommended, actually. Are there any questions Thank from you. the audience to, to uh, Diana and her presentation? Is there anything that you want to know which is important? Uh, I was very detailed, for, for sure. I told you I, I, I got uh, totally sweaty when you had all these uh, platforms, huh? Yeah. Which is which is very important. There's a question over here or a comment. Tiana, first of all, very interesting, very interesting. That's very interesting. It was a pleasure to listen to you. There's a lot of things, there's a lot of ground for thought. And I would like to answer a question. I have no idea how to answer it, but maybe you know. Does it make sense for right holders to accumulate on one big resource, or it's better to collaborate with various resources who do what you do, or something like what you do from the point of view of distribution, from the point of view of contacting the audience? I just don't know. What would you say? Yeah, as one of the points I was uh, trying to say was, is if you have the time, put it to as many platforms as you can. Um, you could do it at one time, the earlier the better. And I would definitely vote for, you know, cooperating with platforms uh, that you like, with platforms that are uh, curated, uh, and uh, with platforms where you always ask what kind of promotion they do, if they do PR for your film. Will they put, the view, will you, they put your film on the homepage for a week? or do they have social networks, or how do they promote the films? Um, yeah, so I would, I mean, if you copied this list of, of platforms, you could maybe uh, try and browse if you like it, and if you, it's a good home for your film. And uh, because uh, the curated platforms, of course, like Doc Alliance is, uh, then a couple of others that are also uh, very active in Europe, um, they have their audience, like a cinema does. People understand what kind of films they can get there, even though they don't know them. Uh, so yeah, make it short. Go to more platforms. And get an audience, which is very good. But you won't get any money out of it. 
I don't think there's any, there's no money in documentary. Just, it's, know, thank there's you. no money. Thank you for saying this, because why would we expect that you, you get the money or you don't get the money online? You know? I mean, of course, the revenues, for example, with Doc Alliance films, the revenues are getting higher and higher every year over 120% or 100% higher revenues every year. That's why we're still doing it, because it's getting better and better. People are getting used to buying things online. The point th is that there's a whole different psychology when you want to make the decision uh, to buy a thing, because when you walk into the cinema, you buy a ticket and you are already there. If you go online, you, you find something, you find a film, and you start Googling the film, and then suddenly you get to another website and another. So to get the audience to make the payment is much more difficult, really, because they run away in an instant, because you want to read about things, and then you find a new platform with a new film, and then it's a never-ending story of just, you know, searching for information. So. Uh, it is a difficult thing, but the revenues are getting bigger and bigger, and with the landscape changing of the industry, we will see what will happen. But it is a really strong promotional tool. That's why I say, once you are ready, offer it for free. And Netflix, HBO mm -hmm. is there. Is that uh, changing the landscape? It is uh, of VOD. Let's say HBO is changing the landscape in the way that uh, they have films that they have exclusively. So uh, then, of course, uh, it's a bit complicated more for the producers, mm -hmm. and uh, you know they have certain territories exclusively. So the producers then cannot sell the films to anyone else in that territory, and. Um, and Netflix, I think, is a good thing in the way that uh, they will never have the content that these platforms like Doc Alliance Films or Mubi uh, do. You know, it's it's uh, it's uh, Netflix is just a mainstream corporate. Uh, they 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 made money out of selling DVDs many years ago, and then they realized that it's really diff it's really expensive to send the films by post. So they were clever enough to switch to online. And they already had the contracts with many uh, big companies. So, um, yeah, so th that's a whole different story, but uh, they are ch changing the landscape in the way that people are getting used to paying online, which is good. The p more platforms we have, the better. But if you sell the film to Netflix, mm -hmm. it's good money. I'm um, not sure, or not always, and I don't really know any independent filmmakers who do this. But if you do it upfront, if they produce a film, yeah, if they, of course, it's absolutely it's good money. Absolutely, it's big acquisitions. Okay, are there any other comments, reactions to what we heard from, from Diana? It seems no. I think we are getting to the end. Thank you very much, Diana, again. Um, we are getting to the end of, of, of the conference, and uh, how can we conclude? We cannot conclude, but Victor can come up here and he can say some words after two days of conference that you have organized, Victor, with the help of money from the Nordic, Nordic Council. Can you come up here? Yes, it's a bit sad to be a closing conference. We see a lot of brave people here who managed to make it till the end of the conference. That means they're very interested and very happy to see you. So it was not in vain that we organized the conference. There are people who are interested in what they were discussing that will need the information that was exchanged here. And I hope in this or that way you will start using the ideas that you heard during our conference. And I hope that meeting the partners, our partners from Scandinavia, will grow. And in the future you'll start corresponding and collaborating, hopefully and you'll have some projects together, some new projects. 
happy because, you know, the documentary professionals, as we learned during those two days, are people who are working in a team because there is no other way to survive for us. Yes, it's a beautiful art documentary film. I am infinitely thankful to all speakers, dear friends, dear colleagues. Thank you for coming here. Your reports are wonderful. They were very interesting. And I think I will join the opinion of all the Russian side if I say that we learned a lot of new things for us, and that is the most important. We are in a different stage of development than you are for various reasons. Such conferences and such information exchange is very important. I'm sure that our collaboration will develop further because we're starting to understand each other. We're starting to have common technologies. So we have common professional field. That's wonderful. Thank you very much, everybody who took part in the conference. Good luck to you. Good luck. I wish you success. Thank you. The conference is closed.